So today I'm going to be solving stretch from the linked list chapter. This is a voiceover from my laptop on my iPad because there's something wrong with the audio on the iPad. But yeah, hopefully this voiceover will make sense. So write a method stretch that takes an integer n as a parameter and increases a list of integers by a factor of n by replacing each integer in the original list with n copies. So basically, if we start out with this list, 18, 7, 4, um, 24, and 11. So if n equals 3, and we make the call to list.stretch3, in this case, okay, I should slow down. <laughs> In this case, we would want to return um, basically all like 18. We want to we would want to replace. We would want to add two more copies of 18, resulting in three total. So we're not actually adding three copies, but we're making sure the total of copies that appears of any node in this list is n or three in this case. All right, so. Um, we're just going to first consider t the first two nodes in this list, and we're going to consider how that's going to work out um, in terms of adding the copies of the nodes and also retaining our linked list pattern. So suppose we have this 18 here, excuse me, and the next node is 7 all the way down. In between, we're going to have those two more copies of 18, right? So... If we let n equal to 3, um, I don't even know what I was saying at this part. But what I was saying is we don't want to lose a reference to this next node. Because as we fill in these copies of the nodes, we want to make sure that we have reference to the rest of the list so that it doesn't get taken by like garbage collection. So basically, we want to make sure to... Um, keep these linked together so we don't actually lose our original linked list and um, we can successfully copy that next node and so on and so forth because we will need to make copies of the 7 and the 4 and 24 and 11 and so on. So suppose that we have the front of the list as 18, right? So we're going to have 18 as the front and then we'll have um, 7 as that next node. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a current reference to this front node. So we'll say current equal to front. And we're going to use this to traverse to the list and make the copies. So um, like I said, the idea is we don't want to lose reference to that next node. So um, we'll store that in some variable. Okay, maybe that's not what I was saying. Wait, I think I'll get there. Yeah, so we want to store this 7. I wish I could do this in real time, but the audio like went out. Okay, so in this case, I was talking about the looping. So while we're traversing through, we're going to make sure to loop n minus 1 times. Because like I said, we're only adding 2 copies. Like when n equal to 3, we added 2 copies instead of 3 copies. So we want to make sure to loop n minus 1 times when we're adding the new copies to get a total of n copies. So also, what was I saying in this part? I'm pretty sure I was talking about uh, making sure to have a reference to this uh, front.next or current.next node, and we'll call it temp next. And the idea is if we, in the beginning, have a reference to this, once we finish making our node copies, then we can simply go to the last node and make its next value be here, um, or pointing to temp next, Therefore, like, we won't lose the reference to this. So let's suppose we're going to loop through and create our new nodes. Let's illustrate how that's going to work. So we'll start at i equals 0, and we'll go for i less than n minus 1 time. So if this example, n equals 3, we're going to go for i less than 2 times. So in the first loop, we're going to be at current, and we'll say, okay, current.next um, is going to equal a new list node with the current.data, or 18, the same data. And then... Um, we're going to go while i is still less than n minus 1, right? So we'll increment i to 1, and then it's still less than 2, so we'll make one more copy of this same node. So we'll say current.next equal um, to a new list node, and then we'll say current equals current.next, because we also have to be moving the current up so that we can progress in our list. So now at this point, once we have, um, we're done looping, and current is here, 
and this temp next is here we still need to manually link them together so that we can still go onto this node and then copy that node n times or n minus one times so we'll need to make sure that once we hit the end of the loop right when we break out of the loop we need to set this current dot next equal to this temp next so that we can retain the reference to it and um have the correct like linked list or make sure our links are correctly linked so we'll say here um, we want to make sure to connect this half or this part first beginning part of our linked list to the latter part of our linked list and kind of attach those together so we're going to say current dot next to create this link here we'll say current dot next equal to temp next and then we'll have to make sure to increment current to be temp next so that we're not making copies of this 18 because if we don't increment current as well current is going to stay here and then we're going to make two more copies of 18 and then we're going to make two more copies of 18 and it's going to be an infinite loop and we want to basically avoid that infinite loop so i think so that's why here we'll say okay current dot next equal temp next and then we'll say current so take this current value and stitch it to this temp next so now we can start making copies of this seven value and then keep incrementing forward until we hit a current that's actually null and does not really exist. All right, so I think that was the gist of what I was saying. Um, now I'm going to code it and practice it. So let's go. And also it says that if the value of n is less than or equal to zero, the list should be empty after the call. So, um, yeah, so we'll just start here. Public void. And this is called stretch. And we'll take in our integer n as parameter. All right. And the first thing I'm going to do is check that if the front is null, then we can just return because there is no need to check because the list is empty. And then we're also going to check if n is less than or equal to zero then we're going to set um, front equal to null, right? So here we're going to say list node current equals to front because the front, this front is ref referencing the beginning of our list. And I also did go through the linked int list class, which I guess wasn't that needed, but um, here are all the fields to have list node class. So data, next, visited, cycle um yeah so you can go through that if you want i'll link this question in the description so list node current equals front and then we're gonna go while current does not equal null then the first thing we want to do is make sure that we have reference to remember this node so that we um make sure we don't lose the link reference to it so we're first gonna say list node temp next equals to current dot next. And if this happens to be null, then either way, when we get to the end and we try to loop again, current is gonna be null, and we're gonna we're not gonna make any more extra copies of some some number or some node. So list node temp next equals to current dot next. So here we're gonna wanna loop n minus one time, right? To make two more copies or however many more copies to reach the total of n. So we'll say for int i equals zero, i is less than n minus one, um, i plus plus, and then we're gonna say, so what do we say again? Okay, so we're gonna say, okay, current, so this is current, so current dot next is gonna be the same list node. So I'll say current dot next equals new list node, and we're gonna say current dot data, because we want it to have the same value, right? And then we need to increment current equal current dot next. So it can be at the next node and so on and so forth. So once we break out of this loop, right, we're gonna be here, like I described in the last step. And we wanna make sure that we link this part, this half of the link list to the remaining latter half um, and link those together and then um, update the current so that it's at the correct node. So I'm gonna say current dot next equals um what is it equal to oh yeah so this remember we have the reference to that up here so temp next and then current equals 
current dot next. So now we're actually incrementing. So we're setting current equal to that temp next value, which was that original seven value in our linked list. So here, even if current dot next is null, then um, if this is null, then we're not gonna re-enter this loop. And I think that's it, so let's try this. All right, so that worked, and I hope that made sense. See you guys in the next video.